Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording, and today we're gonna build an instrument rack in Ableton using sounds from the Make Noise Strega so that you can see how cool and relatively easy it is to take a sound from a monophonic instrument like the Strega, the O-Coast, Bass Station, something like that, a Moog, I guess, and turn it into a polyphonic, complex, beautiful thing, um, maybe a little nasty if that's what you're into. And um, we're gonna cover grouping, uh, instrument racks, audio racks, macro mapping, and the philosophy of how to sort of make something out of these sounds. Uh, this is in conjunction with the release of my Make Noise Strega pack for Ableton. It's a collection of 42 instruments that I designed based on the video that I did for the Strega. Uh, I think it's cool as hell. Check it out in the video description and let's get into making some instrument racks. All right, well, here we are. We are inside of Ableton. And this right here is one of the performances that I did with Strega. This was running through the Empress Effects Zoya using a patch that I created called Loop Forest. And basically it takes the incoming audio and turns it into four separate loops with four different directions and speeds and has a bunch of probability and stuff. You can actually download it for free on patch storage if you want to put it on your Zoya. It's probably the best patch I've ever made on Zoya. But it does some really interesting things. So let's listen real quick. gonna hear right there. See that waveform right there? Yeah, that little boop, 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 boop. So that's what it's doing. So I'm gonna use this portion right here. This will be our first demo. Just take this note here and I'm gonna go ahead and isolate it from the rest. What I wanna do before I get into the instrument rack is I wanna tune this to C because I want the instrument to be playable in a normal tuning um, and I don't want people to have to transpose. So I'm gonna tune this using the tuner here in Ableton. Now, if you're not using modular synthesizers that you just tuned by ear, then maybe this isn't an issue for you, but it's an issue for me. So let's go ahead and figure it out. I'll just hit play. And in this case, looks like we're just a few cents short of C. So I'll come over here and I'll just tune this up like 13 cents. If we look at our tuner again, we want to be hovering right around there. Now we're sharp. Okay, well maybe we're good to begin with. All right, so you don't need to do this now, but I'm going to I'm going to turn this into an isolated chunk of audio uh, using the consolidate function in Ableton. And that is Control J on a PC and uh, Command J on a Mac. You can also right click and say consolidate, which is right around here. And what that does is it takes that chunk of audio and separates it out from um, any bigger audio that it might have uh, an association with, like this big clip here, and um, makes it its own file, bakes in any of the clip settings that you had down here, and uh, makes it a little bit easier to work with. So now that we have the piece of audio that we uh, know that we wanna work with, um, I can just drag it into a MIDI channel if I want. Um, I can just double click on this MIDI channel and drag it right down into here. Okay, cool. What do we have here? This is Ableton's Simpler device. Uh, simpler as a play on words of sampler. This is a sample playback device that Ableton has with pretty much everything you're gonna need to make uh, an instrument. And immediately what we're gonna be able to do is play this polyphonically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push this right here for right now and the start point right there, give ourselves a little bit of attack and let's try it out. Now, this is my favorite thing. Hear all that motion just kind of like swirling around there? It's so cool when you have a piece of audio that you use for this that has that motion built into it, this, this kind of like you know, glittery stuff, because polyphonically it all plays at different rates unless you have warp turned on. And I'm not actually gonna turn warp on. I want it all to play at different rates so that down here, we get one expression of tempo and you're gonna see it takes a while to get there. Up here. See, it takes much less time. So this is a really interesting way to add texture to your instruments if you want to. Okay, cool. So now that we have this, um, let's go ahead and look at our settings here. Uh, we can mess with our envelope, which we probably will, because I've been doing a lot of pads here. That's beautiful. I want to create a loop here because I don't want this just to end when it gets to the end here. So I'm gonna turn looping on and you'll see now we have a loop region. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the loop right around here, something like that, and give it some fade so that it fades uh, the edges of the loop and we don't get any nasty clicking. Perfect. 
Perfect. That's wonderful. Okay, cool. So this one's already stereo, but we can double this up and um, add some more interest to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say group. You can also hit control G or uh, command G. And you're going to want to do that by selecting the device itself. So the device that you want to group, select it, and then put that command in. And now we have an instrument rack. Instrument racks are where the power of this starts to begin. So um, I'm going to double this up. I'm going to go ahead and say duplicate. And now we have two of these and I can do something interesting to this other one if I want. I could like reverse it. Maybe I'll start it here and I'll put its loop there. Something like that. And now we have two separate versions of this sound. And you can see the second one is looping where that cool um, Zoya like kind of like glitter stuff is. So now we have an even more interesting sound because this one is going to take a while to get there and it's going to go forward. And this one's going to get there pretty fast and it's going to loop on that glittery part right there. And also it sounds reversey, which is always cool. All right, cool. Um, so uh, the first thing I want to do with our instrument rack is I want to create um, some what are called macros to control the settings in here. Specifically, I want to be able to control things like attack and um, maybe that's it. Maybe the filter. I think that's what I did in the instrument rack. You can choose whatever you want. So in order to do that, um, we're going to probably want to see our macros. So if we come over here to the left of the instrument rack, we can click this little button. Boop. And now we see our macros. And in Ableton 11, you can have as <laughs> little as one. There's one old knob up to like uh, 16 of these, which is is useful. I've been sticking with eight for this pack specifically, um, but in another pack, I think I did 10 just because there were some other settings I wanted to grab. So to map things to these macros, we could simply right click on it here and say map to macro right here. Now, if you've got multiple instruments like this that are all the same device, like in this case, it's all simpler, you don't have to go to the other one and right click and do that as well. You can, but you can also right click on the control and choose map to all siblings, which is a really, really useful technique to um, get multiple controls all mapped to the same thing at once. So when I do this, we will now have control over the attack of our uh, both, both our simplers. which is great. I'm gonna turn off this retrig button right here just because I don't like the way it sounds uh, in this particular instrument. I love that, it's so good. Okay, let's get the filter on there too. Um, I'm gonna map that to macro two and again, right click and map to all siblings. So now we have a filter, which is great. Okay, cool. So this is already sounding pretty cool. Honestly, this sound has a lot of character built into it, but in the pack, I did a bit more, including some um, like shimmer effects and stuff. So let's build that shimmer effect audio effect track and uh, see how that works. A shimmer reverb is basically a reverb that has a pitch shifter in the feedback loop and uh, usually goes up, though there is such a thing as a reverse shimmer where the pitch goes down. Now there is a shimmer reverb built into the hybrid reverb here. If we load this up, we'll see that we have in our algorithms, we have a shimmer, but um, I am not using that. <laughs> I am using a different technique. And I'm going to use in um, our delay and loop, I'm going to use a grain delay. A grain delay is this really interesting granular delay that takes pieces of the audio that are coming in and repeats them like a delay or an echo does. Um, the number of times that it repeats it is based on feedback. And um, the cool thing is we can actually raise the pitch of the feedback. So if I put 12 here, that's an octave. So let's go ahead and listen to that now. So you hear that like kind of metallic sound? If we turn this up to, uh, let's say right here. So now you can hear all those weird, <laughs> those weird bits up there. I'm gonna turn spray up just a little bit and random pitch up a little bit. Wonderful, amazing. Now that sounds a little gross. Uh, so what I did after that was I grabbed a reverb and uh, just a regular one, and I stuck it after that and I turned it all the way wet. Now, what happens now is because of the way that Ableton works, from left to right in the channel. And I think a lot of, um, you know, a lot of DAWs work this way. You know, you have a source of audio over here, and then as you move, it passes through everything to the right. Now this reverb is uh, affecting everything. I don't want the sound to be 100% reverb, even though 
you know, it's not terrible. I want a, I want a shimmer reverb. So what I need to do is create a path that uh, lets the grain delay and reverb create their sound and then uh, have a dry path. And you can do that with an audio effect rack. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these two devices right here and I'm gonna group them again. So you can right click or you can hit Control G on a PC uh, or Command G on a Mac. When you do that, you'll once again see they get encapsulated by a little container and that is our audio effect rack. So one of the things that effects racks do is it lets you create different paths for your sound by clicking this little icon down here on the bottom left of the audio effect rack that looks like three dots and three lines, we open up our sort of chain view. And um, right now we have one chain in here. Uh, it is grain delay into reverb. But if I go down here and I say create chain, I can create a blank chain. And um, when you have a blank chain in the audio effect rack, you've created a you know, dry pass through, meaning that um, it will just pass through what was uh, sent into it without any effect into it. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and listen. certainly is still very creepy, isn't it? <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, that's a lot better. I'll just turn the settings down a little bit. So, um, I don't want that, I do want the reverb all the time. I love the reverb, um, but I don't want the grain delay sound all the time. So what I'm gonna do is use the audio effect rack to create a macro to control that. Eventually, we're gonna pass this audio effect rack control to our main one out here, but um, we have to do a little bit more work before we can do that. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select the, the uh, setting that I want to uh, play with, and that is the dry wet right here. So I'm gonna map that to macro one, and I will call this uh, shimmer amount. Name it whatever you want, but it does help to name it. And now I can bring this in when I want to. It's a little sinister, isn't it? I'm also gonna map feedback because I find this to be a really cool one. So if I turn this up, this is what happens when I turn up feedback. It's especially good for like horror drones. It sounds really cool. Oh yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. All right, so let's go ahead and rack these together now so that we can pass through our controls. I wanna keep track of how many macros I'm using as I go through. So. I can group groups. <laughs> so uh, select instrument rack, select audio effect rack, um, and use the group command again, and you'll now put them together. Now, what that did is made another container right here to the left, uh, another instrument rack. And if I open this one up, we'll see that we have the macros again. So we need to pass things up the chain in order to have this final instrument rack, which I'll just name final uh, for verbosity. Um, and uh, we need to pass them up so that this last macro cluster here is what we're dealing with. So I'm gonna map this to macro one, I'm gonna map this to macro two, and now let's go to our audio effect rack and pass that through. So we'll pass shimmer amount to three and feedback to four. So there it is, here is our final one. You can see here that we have our controls that we pass them through. Um, you may need to do a couple different passes depending on how um, nested your racks are, but you can you can nest recursively pretty much forever, I think, um, which is really, really cool. Um, okay, so one of the other things that I did was I added some um, overdrive to this because I really like the sound of reverbed overdrive, uh, sort of post-rock stars of the lid, drone stuff. My favorite overdrive uh, is overdrive. <laughs> so I was going to put that between our uh, samples here and our, uh, what do you call it, our effect rack here. And um, let's go ahead and dial in the settings that we want. I wanted to really growl. I love that. That's so good. Okay. Now, do I want this to ever be more than 50% wet? No, I don't. So now we're gonna use um, some of the cool tools we have in Ableton to constrain the amount of um, movement that a macro knob will do to a control. Because by default, the macro is gonna take this from zero to 100 and that's not what I want. So let's go ahead and map this, map it to five and I'll call 
this out here. I'll call this overdrive. Um, or how about just distortion? Oh my gosh, I can't spell. So if I hit the map button here above our uh, thing, whatever rack you, you have mapped the original control to, you're gonna to wanna to use the map thing. We bring up the map menu, boop, 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 right here. And um, this is where you can see all the mappings that are assigned to this thing. And you can adjust the amounts. So you see here is our distortion, overdrive, dry, wet. I wanna go from zero just to 50. So now the range of this has changed. We go from zero to 50%, and that's fantastic. If you don't like the fact that it says 50% and you wish it just said like zero to 127, you can right click and say, show generic zero to 127 value. And there you go, wonderful. All right, now we have an issue though. I want you to pay attention to the level of volume here. Obviously there is a pretty big volume jump when the distortion goes up. And I don't want that. I just want the tone to change. So we can do something clever. We can map two controls to the same um, macro and have them have different values. So I can use a utility after our overdrive here and map the gain to the same thing that distortion is mapped to. Come back over here. And uh, we're gonna adjust the mapping and map. And I'm gonna find that utility here that I just mapped. And I want it to start at zero dB, that's fine. I'm gonna have it go down to negative six, maybe. So let's see if that keeps the volume the same as we go through. Not quite, let's bring it down to negative eight. That's great. You want, I mean, a little bit of volume is gonna be just perceptually impossible to avoid because of the way the frequencies are being excited. Um, and if you look here, uh, can I actually get to both of these at once? Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Okay, keep an eye on our overdrive and utility and watch what happens when I turn the knob. See, now we have two controls. One is going from zero to 50% on the distortion or overdrive, and the other one is going from zero to negative eight on the utility. Super useful, super cool, I love it, it's great. This is the foundation of the Strega pack that I made, is this what you've just seen right here. Overdrive, these macro mappings over here, this shimmer reverb, um, and a limiter at the end. Let's go ahead and stick that on there, right there at the very end inside the rack. But you'll see that we still have these three wild cards here. Um, we can do whatever we want with those. Um, and the reason that I want to build this whole rack here and then you know maybe decide on those later is because now that I have this, um, if I go ahead and duplicate this, uh, this thing here, so we'll call this um, 01 and we'll call this one 02. Now that I have these, what I can do is find another piece of audio. Yeah, let's grab that. Um, so I'll just get rid of the other stuff here because we already have stuff. So that's at G. So let's go ahead and um, manipulate that down to C. Uh, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not gonna bother warping it. I'll just turn it down. Cool, so uh, again, we're gonna consolidate this with a control J or command J. So it's its own little chunk. Now, if I go to O2 here and go into our instrument racks and our assembler, I can just drag this new piece of audio into here. And you'll see that it retains almost everything that we've done. Um, I'm gonna reverse the second copy here like this. And now I have all that same mapping stuff. I don't have to redo that. And I can just play this new instrument. the attack down and makes more of a, like a lead. Or again, bring this back up. Oh, and one thing that's cool about this filter thing, uh, if we turn the filter like to right around here and the distortion up, we get this wonderful growly like thing. I just love it. It sounds really good through the shimmer reverb too. It's very evocative. I like it quite a bit. 
So you can um, create these instrument racks. And um, once you got to a certain point, once you think you have all the macros that are going to be the same for every single one, um, then you can start making copies of your instrument rack and uh, you can iterate on the samples that you're putting in there. But let's, for the sake of this video, finish up some custom macros here. One thing I did that I really enjoy in um, these particular things is added some new copies of this stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna group them together just because uh, it's easy for me to look at. We'll call these original. So we're grouping in our instrument rack. Everything gets passed through just fine. Uh, it's all good. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and we'll call this um, new intervals. So what I've been liking to do is taking these uh, new interval ones and pitching them um, to some pleasant intervals. So what I'll do is come over here and hit controls and go to uh, transpose right here. And I'll put this up, uh, let's see, 12 is an octave and then seven up from that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna high pass this one a little bit. I'm gonna go into my audio effects and grab an EQ three, stick it on just this one, and turn down its low end like that. Amazing. Now this one, I'm gonna grab that same EQ and put it right here. And this one I'm gonna go, let's see, we were at 19. What's another uh, seventh up from that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How about an octave up from that? So that would be 38. Yeah, and this one's going octave up from this, so that would be 21. Yeah, we want these to be like really, really uh, clearly different than our main uh, our main intervals um, because they're gonna be a special little friend that, on top of that. Cool, so here's our original. And here's our new. So I'm gonna pan this one a little bit to the left, pan this one a little bit to the right. Ooh, not that much. Okay, great. So these are our uh, a new interval layer that we can add to the whole thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this bit right here, this volume bit, map that to macro. Let's see, I'm gonna have to map it to this instrument rack and then put it out to here, that's fine. So I'm gonna map it to macro six just for visual stake. There it is right there. And here I'm going to adjust my map before I go forward because I don't want this to go up to six dB like it can by default. So I'm gonna go map, I'm gonna find that right here knock that down to zero. And now the highest we can go is zero dB. Map this out to our final thing and call this uh, harmony. And now we can bring that in on top to whatever amount we want, like that. No, the only thing I like to add to this uh, is a drift control. This will be the last macro that we do, even though I have one extra. The drift control is gonna be a series of um, out of phase uh, auto pans um, with no panning, just volume. <laughs> so tremolos basically. Um, so what I'm gonna do is come over here and I'm going to uh, go into uh, pitch and modulation and grab an auto pan. Amount all the way up, rate way low, phase zippo. Um, and let's start mapping. I'm gonna map this to seven, the amount. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that auto pan and I'm gonna paste it onto the next thing. Paste, paste, amount to uh, six. And then we got one more thing we need to do. Let's make sure that we have control over all of our auto pans now. Yes, amounts up. Yes, amounts up. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust some rates here. So maybe 15 for that one, 10 for that one. And then we'll go into our new intervals here, Just right there. Um, and then you can see that our amount is up there. I know this is a lot, sorry. Uh, 13 and 17. Okay, cool. So now by default, this just goes, right? Uh, it, there's no break to the sound, but with the amount up, each one of these now has a 
slow volume on it and they all kind of drift in and out which i think is really really cool um, if we were to pan stuff a little bit harder you would definitely hear this more which is fine you can make a version of this that has that panning and now it swirls around your head which i think is quite beautiful honestly Maybe for our last macro, that's what we'll do. Let's go ahead and assign uh, this to macro eight, this to macro eight. Every single instrument that we have in here um, is going to get uh, a separate pan thing going on. Harmony pan. And we say map and we go zero, zero, left, right, map. All right, let's see. There it is. All right. I love it. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and just shrink this up. Um, and now you have a, call this uh, the beauty of it all. Give it a, you know, esoteric name of some kind. And now you have an instrument and you can iterate uh, however you want. Um, again, I would recommend doing as much of this work here in terms of creating the guts of the instrument rack and all the mappings uh, before you start iterating. So that way, um, when you get to uh, wanting to make another one, you have all these cool controls just set up there. And also this will make it easier for the uh, person that's using these, uh, you know, if you're distributing them to uh, just get to know how your things work. You can even color code these if you want. I did in my Strega pack, um, each one had its own color and I tried to keep uh, stuff consistent in terms of, you know, like what it was for. So if there was controls that controlled a similar kind of thing, I would try and color code them accordingly. And that's it. That's all I have to say about this. Uh, hopefully that was a little bit of interesting for you. Hopefully that uh, knocked some stuff loose in your head on stuff that you could do if you have maybe a mono synth sitting around or anything that you have sitting around that maybe you can just sample a note from or something like that and turn it into something, you know, much, much more cool and much more playable in Ableton. It's honestly really, really fun. I hope you give it a try. Uh, if you liked what you heard here, you are an Ableton user um, and you want, uh, check out the Strega pack that I made. Links in description. I'm really proud of it. 42 instruments in a variety of timbres and moods. Um, really, really great stuff for cinematic design, video game design, horror drones, post-rock, all that kind of stuff. I'm proud of it. And I'd love for you to eat it in your face. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day.